So, with the uh, demise of my Aircus um, weather station and uh, it no longer being <coughs> excuse me, available, we've uh, looked around for another option uh, but that will all, uh, also allow us to upload the data to the um, weather underground like I uh, used to. And we came across this uh, EcoWit on uh, Amazon. This is a 7-in-1 solar powered uh, outdoor sensor array. I've also bought the indoor uh, thermometer hydrometer sensor, uh, same you know, as we had with the old system. Uh, this connects to your Wi-Fi and uh, just takes power from any convenient USB charger. There are three or four AA lithium uh, batteries required for this, which we have bought uh, separately. They're not cheap either, lithium batteries. I'm pretty certain I had these in the, uh, the other weather station. Um, I think it used three and they're trickle charged by the solar uh, display, sorry, solar panel on here. So I thought we would have a little look. Uh, I mean, there's nothing too unusual, not much point in me reading all this out. There are other sensors that you can buy for this. You can plug in, uh, sorry, you can use uh, up to eight temperature and humidity sensors. Uh, up to eight soil moisture sensors and up to four air quality sensors. Now I had also seen on Amazon a lightning detector <laughs> for this. It doesn't mention it on here um, but I'm pretty certain it was for this model but I'm not entirely sure what you'd need a lightning detector for. I suppose if you had uh, a warning before you could see or hear it uh, then you could turn sensitive equipment off and unplug it from the mains and the uh, you know whatever other connections you've got uh, made uh, in case of a, uh, a local lightning strike that might be running through uh, you know the power cables outside um, but no mention of it on here it was also quite expensive so yeah we definitely haven't gone for that so we're going to have a little look see what you get I'm more interested in the quality really and, and how long I think this is going to last. <coughs> right, the first Aircus weather station lasted three years and then it packed up and uh, then I bought a replacement head for it and uh, unfortunately that lasted only a year. So let's have a little look at what's in this small box. <coughs> oh, absolutely tiny. It's funny how you get the impression of something when you're looking on a picture on the box. I was expecting this USB control box to be <coughs> much bigger, but of course it's absolutely tiny. Oops, uh, looks like we've got some sort of sticky... A sticky um, mount of some sort there. Oh, I see it's for the aerial. Right, so yeah, you've got a USB connection, so that will plug into uh, whatever you've got, and then you will just stretch that aerial out and uh, secure it in place with the little sticky pad. So that is that. We have <coughs> one of my pet hates is pull out sheets like this. They're usually a pain in the ass to read. So what have we got? Yeah, basic instructions for a whole range of models. Um, okay, this is interesting. There's various dip switches to set. Channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's got multiple channels. <clears throat> I guess that's in case your neighbour's got exactly the same thing. So we've got a rain gauge, weather vane, wind direction, hydrometer, lux, solar strength, all sorts we have. 
Uh, battery compartment is number two. I'm just trying to see how many batteries that takes. Yeah, it looks like it is three batteries, just like the last one. Oh, it looks like we've got another. Oh, soil moisture sensor. So it also covers uh, those as well. It shows you where the battery goes. And then just how it actually uh, connects. There is an app that goes with this. Um, but as I say, you can also, also upload uh, to the uh, weather cloud, weather underground and various other services, I believe. I use weather underground and that's what we'll be attempting to set up. So uh, this doesn't come with it, but I have added it. very well on my videos today. Some of them I'm not even going to bother uploading. They were so bloody awful. It's funny how you have good and bad days with uh, <laughs> making videos. Some days you can't even string a sentence together like today. Okay, so instructions. Yeah, basic. Uh, temperature and humidity sensor. Okay, so let's start pulling some little bits and pieces out. So we have few bolts uh, for the mast. Looks like that is going to fit the mast that we've currently got. That's good. We have the little wind direction vane. Now it did seem that spares were available. Oh, blimey, that couldn't be any more basic, could it? I want a screw that's going to remind you that looks like it's stainless. I was going to say it's going to rust and be horrible, but hopefully uh, it won't if it's stainless. It certainly looks like stainless. So, what we're going to do, we'll grab a magnet. Let's see what quality of stainless it is. Uh, really good quality stainless. <laughs> no attraction at all. Very hard to find stainless with no attraction. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay, what else? This is the anerometer. And again, is that? Yeah, that is held in place by a screw. Again, yeah, no reaction to the magnet. A USB extension. Wonder why we need that. We have a spanner. We've got various loose nuts and things floating around. That's it. Okay, so here we are. This is uh, we missing something. It's supposed to go underneath there. What's the picture? Mm, no, guess not. It just looked like there's something clips on there, but that's of course the uh, mast that goes <laughs> up into there. The noise is the water rain gauge flap. We have a little levelling bubble there. Not that going to have much levelling options when that is actually up on the mast. Now, weirdly, we have a west label on there. I would have expected it to say point to north because that's a hell of a lot easier than aligning to west. Um, but uh, yeah, we know where north is, and of course we know where west is, so we'll uh, sort that out. Plastic feels like quite nice quality. We've got uh, the spin doors. Very easy to spin around. 
Now, as I recall, let's have a look at the picture. The wind speed sensor is on the top. It's a little rubber grommet there. There is on the bottom as well. That is going to need a small screwdriver to fit. And this one fits perfectly, so we are just going to back that out so I can't see the threads in the hole. And then we'll just do that up. So no problem there, and the same with this. Now this is keyed, obviously. Oh, okay. this is uh, keyed. There is a flat edge, so I'm assuming the flat edge is also keyed into there, and it is. So. Good having a magnetic screwdriver with this one. So there we go. We have uh, wind direction, wind speed, and uh, and everything else. Yeah, so that should work nicely. Uh, sensor setups. Insert batteries into battery compartment, remove this sticker, press reset button to start sensor operation. Yeah, so because this is solar powered, um, you do not want it uh, retaining information, uh, and it will do if the uh, yeah. sensor is getting daylight and slightly charging the circuitry. So, uh, yeah. Where the reset button is. Now it looks like we have a reset button just under here. Looks like we've got a communication LED there. I can't see for sure. Yeah, that looks like an LED to me. And there's a little reset button there. So let's just take the cover off of the batteries compartment I should say so oh only two AAs so um, okay so we'll get our lithium batteries and we'll pop two in oh for god's sake dropping everything today okay so yeah clearly that way Yeah, we do get a little red light there. I don't know whether you can see it's gone off now, but there was a red light flashing up there. Is there much of a seal around this? Mm, no, not really. No seal around that at all. So I know it's at the bottom, but even so, you would have liked to have seen a seal perhaps around that. Look at that again. There is a sort of papery piece at the bottom. I don't think that's doing anything apart from padding out the batteries. Again, yeah, good stainless steel, very little attraction to it. A little bit, not much. That's high quality stainless. And there we go. We just need to that up on the mast tomorrow. Uh, looks like these are actually buttons, RF, Wi-Fi, and it will pair with the app to your Wi-Fi and then pair to the uh, weather station. So we'll do that uh, another day. And uh, is that a spanner for these? Yeah. So a spanner for the U-bolt supplied. Uh, 
seem to have managed to lose a nut. But, uh, whatever, we'll be putting lock nuts on there, I expect, anyway. Oh, there's one in the bag. So three came out, and one's left in the bag. Look, that's what's happened there. Bags torn in transit. So, okay, yeah, that is the uh, Eco Wit G1, sorry, GW1101 7 in 1 solar powered weather station. So, we'll get the app downloaded and uh, oh, I see that's what that's for. Uh, instead of plugging that into something and it's not very convenient, you can uh, just plug it into the extender like so, and you've got a good length of cable there to plug that into. Yeah, you must have uh, about five foot of cable. So, yeah, excellent. So we'll get that uh, up and running uh, over the next couple of days, weather permitting, and uh, see how it all goes. Hopefully it'll be good. Whole list of um, dip switches on there. At the moment we've got one, two, three, down and four up. Oh, okay, so the fourth one, if you look here, you see the switches there? Oh, the cover shows you what they do. And the fourth one is actually Fahrenheit or centigrade um, at the moment. Yes, yeah, so I can't tell which way is up or down because all they've done is got a black or white square. It's not obvious which way that is. Actually it is because one, two, three are down so the dark squares are where the actual switch is and uh, in our case uh, the switch is up for Fahrenheit and I would like it down for centigrade so that is good. Don't see a reset button on this, I suspect this is just going to chat to the I main sensor here on uh, whatever channel this works on and it's 868 megahertz and we need another two AAs I think or are they triple A's? No, nope. AAs so good job I got a pack of four one of those days. So very nice uh, readable, or easy readable uh, display. We've got 70.7 Fahrenheit, although I thought I'd just put it to centigrade. Uh, maybe it's transmitting centigrade to the uh, receiver. And 71% uh, relative humidity and we are on channel one. So uh, yeah, that all looks good. One screw in the wall just to uh, hold that in place. So great, we'll hopefully get that installed in the next couple of days and uh, yeah, more on that later.